Revenge Films. Three years into our marriage, my wife cheated on me. Her lover is her former high school classmate. The reason why I noticed her affair was because my wife has been avoiding sleeping with me at certain points in our marriage. My wife is my only partner, so honestly speaking, it's not fun to be able to do it with just anyone. So I asked her, to which she replied, It hurts down there. It might be a medical issue. If that's the case, it's a serious problem. So I suggested that she get herself checked at the hospital, and I didn't push her to sleep with me. However, a year after that, my wife started to persistently invite me to bed. Her urge was so strong that she acted like a beast searching for prey. A very different persona from when she used to reject my invitations. However, her actions escalated from there, and there was even a time when she welcomed me home with only her underwear on. Her approach started to become stranger and more eccentric, so I tried to stay calm and think about the situation. Why now? Does it have to do something about the balance of the hormone or something? It has to be now. I want you to hold me. She told me, and I started thinking of reasons why she said that. I thought of a different situation, in which she might say that, and... Could it be that she's having an affair, and since she's pregnant, she wants me to think it's my baby? That thought floated around my mind for a minute. Not knowing what to do with this thought, I jokingly asked my wife if she was having an affair, if she was pregnant with someone else's baby, and wants me to think that the baby is mine. Funny, right? To which she replied with a horrified look on her face. Stop joking around! How could you joke around like that? With that worded expression and trembling voice, I thought that it might be true. Since then, I got anxious about what might be, and my gut wrenched like crazy. I was frustrated with disbelief and distrust that I felt like I was going to die. I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I started to look for evidence, and that's when I found that there was actually a mountain of evidence inside a box in the compartment under our bed. Bingo. I was right. There was a schedule book and a diary with her lover's pictures. There was even an adult toy with her lover's name on it. There were even photos and videos of them sleeping together neatly compiled. That was the first time in my whole existence that I felt utterly shocked. I felt tremendously horrible. I stood there dazed for a moment, then I heard my wife come home. When she opened the door to our bedroom, she screamed and dove onto the pile of evidence of her affair. Then she scrambled the pieces of evidence under her and crouched down. Then she started weeping and screaming at the same time. This is not what you think it is. These are not mine. They're my friend's stuff. She started to spit out things that don't make any sense at all. You expect me to believe you when all the pictures are showing your face? I said they're my friends. Why don't you get it? <laughs> She just kept saying the same nonsense over and over again in a raised voice. My wife was hunched over on the floor looking like a lost turtle. Thinking I needed the mountain of evidence, I collected all the evidence I could find and piled them into the storage box. I headed out the door. I feigned composure and pretended to be calm in front of my wife. But the truth is that I was actually panicking and forgot my phone in the house. That day, I lived in my car slept in it too. The next day I used the public telephone to call my workplace that I will be taking the day off. I then went to my single friend's place who was living alone. I asked him for advice on how to go about things. He suggested that I hire a lawyer, demand alimony from my wife and her lover, and get a divorce. Thankfully, my friend let me stay at his place and even cooked food for me. I haven't gone home for several days. I, I thought I'll have a difficult time looking for a lawyer. But since I had all the evidence that I needed and we had no children, I was able to find someone willing to take my case without much difficulty. The lawyer is a woman and I heard that she is strong when it comes to divorce cases. Then, when I arrived home, my wife happily greeted me. When I saw my wife, I remembered the mountain of evidence. It made me feel like throwing up. Where did you go? I was worried sick about you. My wife said as if concerned about me. So I told her. Let's get a divorce. Her face turned pale, and she tried to explain. That was just a misunderstanding. It was really just my friends, and I was keeping it. 
Even at that point, she still wanted to keep it a secret. I was appalled. I was appalled from the bottom of my heart. I was sure she was going to do it again, even if I were to forgive her. So I ignored my wife. I instead collected my phone, passbook, passport, and other important documents. She followed me around crying like a child and desperately explained herself. But I remained silent and I didn't entertain her annoying cries. Macy kept on saying that those things all belonged to her friend, but she finally said, Please believe me, that was a lie! You're the only one for me, I was just tempted for a moment! She didn't even realize that what she said contradicted her previous statements. When I went out the door, I handed her the divorce registration paper to her. I told her to sign it and send it to me after signing. The rest of the communication was through the lawyer. I didn't want to get involved with Macy, and I didn't want to remember that awful memory. When I demanded alimony from both of them through my lawyer, Macy's lover called my lawyer and said, I want to meet him in person and apologize to him. But my lawyer rejected his request. The lawyer told me, To sum it up, I think what he wanted was a reduction of alimony. Chris was single, so my only way of revenge was to get him fired from work and demand a high amount of alimony from him. So, I don't want to reduce it at all. I had no plans of reducing the amount at all, though. I even wanted to demand more, you know? I made him sell his car and other valuable belongings. I made him pay in one lump sum. I sent certified documents to his workplace, so I'm sure he's fired from his company now. After that, I sold our house, and Macy was sent straight to her parents' house. The next day, we met together with both our parents and announced our divorce. To summarize what Macy said during that meeting, she confessed that while I was at work in the middle of the day, she met with her married female friends in the neighborhood and secretly hosted blind date parties. They pretended that they weren't married and got addicted to these parties. She wore simple clothes to the parties. Simple clothes were better received by the men instead of being all dolled up. So that's why there were no flashy clothes and innerwear inside her closet. Then, she just happened to run into her former high school classmate at one of the parties. They hit it right off and they came closer than they should have. Since then, they started dating within three months. Chris proposed to Macy, so she told him she's actually married. But to her surprise, Chris said, So just get divorced and then marry me. However, I want you to wait until I get back on track though, then I will propose to you again. And that happens. Hearing his utter nonsense, Macy got her hopes up. She also continued to date for about a year. She even mentioned that she was planning to get a divorce and leave me. A nasty woman. So that means she just used me to fill in the gap until her lover gets back on track. Then, she found out she was pregnant with Chris's baby and told him that she wants to give birth to the baby, but he replied, I don't want a child yet. Chris rejected the baby. Macy had the not-so-brilliant idea of pretending the baby was mine, so her love affair wouldn't be found out. That explains why she suddenly was so persistent on sleeping with me, after a long period of not doing so. She probably computed it and thought that if she just made it look like the timing was the same, I wouldn't notice. But a whole month of difference? There's no way I wouldn't find out. She's probably thinking of giving birth early, that idiot wife. I mean, I think she looked down on me very much. Macy was a housewife living off my salary, so even if she tries to find work, it'll be quite difficult for her. That's why my parents-in-laws desperately begged me. Please, give our daughter one more chance. I beg you! Macy, show you're sorry for what you've done! My father-in-law scolded her, but I replied, I'm sorry. That's impossible. Look at the number... Look at all this evidence. All I have for your daughter is hatred and disgust. It's so disgusting that there's no way I'll take responsibility and be the father of that child. Having said that, my parents and I left them with their jaws dropped. I'm sure my parents don't want to be in a family with someone who cheated on their son. We did end up getting a divorce, and I received a huge amount of alimony. Macy and Chris's relationship naturally fell apart. Filled with rage, Macy's parents went to Chris to have him take responsibility for the child. But Chris said he was just elated with Macy. But he realized that he didn't really want to marry her. It's just a mess. The baby was born after several months, but Chris didn't marry Macy. So her parents demanded alimony from him. Chris got fired from work and didn't find a job after that. So Macy left her baby to her parents' care. And she worked several jobs from morning until midnight. 
There was a time when she called me saying, I need you in my life, Trevor. I'll never betray you again, so please, let's start over again. She contacted me and tried to get back together. She's gotta be kidding me. Not able to marry her lover and instead gets into constant fights with him? <laughs> should carry the consequences of her action. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.